Welcome, everyone, to United Football Media. Hammer time, the world's home to the Pittsburgh Maulers, the only home for the Pittsburgh Maulers. I'm joined by Alex, who now is official. He is now with Hammer Time, so we'll have two guys on here from here on out. What's going on, man? I'm still on cloud nine about my promotion. You know, <laughs> I was invited to be a, a guest on the show, and two weeks later, I'm a co-host now on Hammer Time, United Football Media. Um, <laughs> wow, talk about a rapid ascent. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Tell everyone how to follow you on uh, Twitter. Sure. You can follow me on Twitter at APPO101424. Okay. I'm going to have to put that on the graphic. That's, that's a lot of random letters and numbers and stuff. Yeah. Keep them, keep them guessing. That's the key, right? It has to do with my hometown and then some of my old numbers when I was uh, back in the day playing ball. So uh, That works. I, had to do you- I wouldn't forget. <laughs> but everyone else forgets. They do. <laughs> it's a little challenging to remember. Um, so we got a huge show. It's absolutely packed for the Maulers this week. We're going to start with the biggest news of the week. New GM. Uh, Lonnie Young left the team uh, last month. Dennis Polian gets hired this week. Uh, big news. Polian's worked with the Hortons before in Tennessee. What's your take on Dennis Polian? Football royalty family when it comes to the front office. You know, when you look at his his dad and what he was able to do with uh, the Buffalo Bills and the dynasty they built there, um, winning a Super Bowl with the Indianapolis Colts, you know, certainly he has the pedigree. I think also when I was looking at his resume, you know, the fact he has the NFL experience, but then when you look at his sort of power five experience, SEC, um, what was the Pac-12 and the Big 12, you know, you've got to believe that those connections are going to come into play. And then you've also got to believe with his brothers heavily involved in the sport as well. I bet you their Thanksgiving table is a lot of fun to sit around. And, um, you know, he's also got a pretty good source if he needs to pick up the phone. Hey, Dad, what do you think about this move? So um, I think it's a great pickup, a great hire. Um, Can't wait to see how it all plays out. Yeah. uh, The greatest thing about this move, I think, is he was a scout and he was the chief of staff at Baylor, a big time program. Um, He's made stops, obviously, with Tennessee as a scout, but. The chief of staff position is kind of like a general manager's position, especially in the modern day football, college football, where you have to kind of handle, you know, it's not the old days where like a guy comes to your school, he only gets one transfer and he's got to sit out a year. Like it's free agency all the time. Right. Um, And for him to be in charge of one of the bigger programs in the country, I I think that's great experience. I think him being Bill Polian's son, obviously is a great experience. Uh, You you see what's happening with Jaron and Ray, right? Right. he grew up around the game of football and he just understands it at a higher level quicker than a lot of people. And I think this, this move is absolutely perfect for the Maulers. And I look forward to this move because I think he might be the guy that takes our team to the next level. You know, we're already in the championship and now you just got to get over that hump. And especially the way the, uh, the stallions are all going to the NFL. You might be able to go, uh, get to get over that hump a little easier. Well, they've got like what twelve or thirteen guys now, I think, are signed uh, from the Stallions. I mean, yeah, that's a big chunk of the roster. But like you said, I think Lonnie took it the next step, and I think that I'm excited because, and you mentioned it, the relationship that you know Dennis has with uh, the Hortons with Ray, um, you know, that's going to help, I'm sure. And you know, it's it's part of that progression. We you talk about Act Three, we're moving into Act Three, and we're signing guys now, we're picking up guys now. Um, and this was a big pickup. I'm really excited to see what he can do with this bunch. Maybe Act Three is the name. You know, this year was Re- Revenge Tour. Yeah. And I had, I asked Boogie already, like, if he comes back, what's the name of the season? Maybe Act Three is the perfect name because you know yeah. Boogie's got the Hollywood ties and everything. It could be a good name. Listen, if Boogie if Boogie's for it, I'm all for it. I'm not going to tell him no. <laughs> right. Moving on, uh, we made our first moves of the year. Uh, signing uh, Terry Beckner, Keith Gibson, Padre London, Malcolm Elmore, Will Miles, and Nasir Player. Your take? I love every single move because these guys are all critical guys. What do you What do you think? hundred uh, percent. You know, Terry Beckner is one where I was really happy to see that this week. That's a good pickup. And again, you know, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago about. I think the key to 2024 is how many of these guys in the core, and these are guys who are part of the core on the slide. 
how many that we bring back in 2024 and then supplement with some, you know, filling in some spots around them. But Gibson, I was thrilled to see sign, um, you know, Madre London. Here's here's a guy who is really intriguing to me. And I hope he has a healthy 2024 and can be that guy to get extra carries. Because I still think even when you go back and you look at his career at Michigan State, you look at his career at Tennessee, you know, he's shown flashes of being that what we talked about that home run back that really high producing back hope he has a healthy 2024 i'm glad he signed it'll be interesting to see what he can do um elmore resigning was fantastic and then you know miles and player uh but if you look at those uh three three of the signings beckner miles player guys up front build your defense inside out i like bringing these guys back yeah, it's awesome. Uh, all these guys have been with the team now going on the third year. Uh, El, like you said, Elmore is – I know he's listed as a safety, but he's really a special teams, like Matthew Slater kind of guy. Mm-hmm. You can get down there and get the – and in the USFL, that's extremely important to have yeah. a guy that's able to be that special teams guy. And Madre London, I've always been a big fan of Madre London. Uh, he's always been my choice out of the three backs that they've had. Mm-hmm. He's shown some uh, flashes. I would like a little bit more consistency. Will Miles is so athletic and such a big dude. And, you know, he played college basketball and he just one of those guys. I'm excited to have him back and player. I'm I'm just excited that we're talking 2024 already with yeah. these guys as the core right now and what goes on in the future. So I like I like player. He's a Southern Conference guy. I think he's an East Tennessee State guy. I yep. think so. It's uh, always good to see the Bucks in the in the uh, USFL making doing some damage out there. So I was glad to see Nasir sign as well. Yeah, guys that left um, for bigger and better things. We got Tez and Gilbert. You know, Gilbert played for the Dolphins uh, this past weekend. Tez played today, right against the Raiders. Yep. Uh, they each had a tackle. They each played. Gilbert was playing in the third quarter when I saw it, which. Tells me that he's in a position battle. You know, yeah. the first preseason game, that is that is where the position battle is earned Right. Um, in that third quarter. I didn't really see a lot of Tez. I know you said he had a tackle, but yeah. what do you think of the guys that just left? Well, you know what? I hope that is they – I hope they get a, a shot. You know, like to your point, you know, when you look at Gilbert, he's a little different in that 2022 played eight games with the Lions. So, you know, he's 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 been there. You know, there's film, uh, you know, obviously what he was able to do this year. His stats were sick for us. I mean, yeah. you know, four four interceptions, 15 pass defense. Um, I, I hope that they give Tazino more snaps so that we can see or that, you know, he, he has an opportunity to prove himself. Now, I didn't get a chance to catch the game. I just caught the box score. So I'm not sure how many snaps he did get today. But, um, you know, I think here's a guy that if you could if he can get enough snaps, um, and situationally, here's the other thing, too. I think he can be a really good situation linebacker for uh, the 49ers because, you know, he's so tough inside but, and in the box. He plays so well. So, you know, he could be one of those guys that's in a personnel package, you know, a, a run-stopping type of package. I just hope he gets enough chances in the preseason to prove his worth. That That's my only concern. Yeah. Um, I, I think both these guys are tremendous talents. Uh, Gilbert obviously has the great genes. You know, his uncle, cousin, is a Hall of Famer. He just yeah. went to the Hall of Fame, Revis. Uh, Gilbert Island was great all year. Tez, you're spot on. I just hope he can stick. The 49ers are a tough defense to stick with because they are so established, but yeah. I'm glad he's at least getting his chance. Uh, other guys in the uh, USFL, NFL pipeline, anyone uh, stick out? I know Ginda signed with the Falcons. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a good pickup. I saw that, I guess, last night. So, and he deserved it. I mean, the the guy's been a beast. He had a wonderful year for Michigan. He deserved a chance, Um, you know, specific to our guys. How about uh, Jeremiah Farms? Yeah. Oh yeah. Six tackles for the Patriots the other day. You know, they got him fourth on the depth chart uh, still, but I mean, that's a pretty impressive, he got some attention, uh, six tackles in the opening game. That's good. I hope he gets a chance to continue that. But I mean, that really jumped out at me when I saw that. Yeah, that, that's – with the Belichick defense, that is an extremely important position, the D-tackle. You remember all the years with Will Fork and Teddy mm-hmm. Washington. Like, it, it's all – he's always been um, D-tackle heavy. That's a tough room to break. So, if yep. Farms gets his chance because they're they're pretty stacked there on their they defense. Are. Uh, they Carlo are. Kemp played as well and Mitch Fabroni, who, 
like you said before, show uh, that he's the only long snapper. So he's it looks it. pretty good for him. He's it. You know, the thing about Carlos, it's interesting too. He got a tackle, but then what, what stood out to me is a couple of quarterback knockdowns, which, yep. you know, if you think about them looking at him as an edge rusher, yep. um, you know, that, that was a good stat. The fact he got the quarterback twice and knocked him down. Now I know they said, I can't pronounce the guy's name, but I know the chargers uh, signed a guy to USC in the second round that they think can be that edge rusher. So I think, you know, Carlos got some competition there, but keep knocking that quarterback down, buddy, make them all our fans proud. But um, that, that was good to see, too. That stood out. Yeah, definitely. Um, breaking news. We're filming this on Sunday. It should be public by Wednesday when the show comes out. Olive Sagapolo was signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. What are your thoughts? That's a tough room. That's, that's you know, a bunch of Georgia boys there. They, they've been pretty dominant. A lot of young Georgia boys. Can Olive stick with the Eagles? They need a Big Ten Wisconsin guy in there. That's what they need. So go Olive. Congratulations, my man. Um, you know, we hope you stick. Uh, enjoyed watching you playing next to Boogie all year long. And uh, that was – you scooped me up. You know, you scooped me on Mark – well, no, you didn't scoop me on Mark Gilbert. You called Mark Gilbert two yeah. weeks ago when we yeah. did the little – you know, we did the who do you think's going to go next. Yeah. And um, good job. <laughs> you want, but the, uh, the Olive – uh, signing that just made my night. I knew he was working out with the Eagles, but the fact that they went ahead and signed him, um, you know, again, we talked about it last week. That's what this league's all about. You know, it's yeah. giving guys opportunities, guys that are right there, giving them that opportunity to take the next step. Your point, defensive line, crowded room in Philadelphia, but you're there now, Olive. You know, here, here it is. You got, you know, you got your shot. So best of luck to you, my friend. Any uh, other names you think could be signed by the Maulers? I, you look on the defense, and I think Boogie should be able to get a shot. You notice that he did not re-sign yet. Um, right. I, I think they're Tarp. Tarp yeah. may be a little undersized, but Tarp should be able to uh, stick. And I know the uh, NFL has kind of gone away from special teams. Isaiah Henney and Josh Simmons, like, come on, man. Every time Henney touched the ball, even receiving the ball, he yeah. was he was a weapon. Like every single time. Yeah, absolutely. And then for the Lions, and you have to help me here, Webb, the, the Lions had a guy, a USFL guy, take a kick back or punt back. Mo Alexander. Yeah. Well, like it's a 96 hard. yard return. Was it a kickoff yeah. return? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. See, that's the thing where I think the USFL, and again, this, is, this isn't flame bait for any XFL people listening, but the USFL got it right on the, especially on the kickoff. Yeah. Because they're giving guys, a lot of specialists an opportunity to, you know, prove their worth, get film. Uh, yeah. That XFL kickoff is awful. I mean, that the guys line up 10 yards apart and it's like, come on. I mean, it's hard to show your skills. And, you know, if you look at the number of injuries and whatnot, you can't tell me, you know, I mean, we've been kicking off, kicking the ball off for a hundred years and running down the field. So, I mean, I think the USFL definitely got that right, but getting back to your original point. Yeah. I mean, I think both him, uh, Simmons and, and Henny deserve a shot. You know I mean? They're, I mean, we, our special teams production this year was f far and away the best in the USFL. And, you know, to your point, these return guys are specialists. So, um, and the fact that in the USFL, you can get a lot of film and, um, you know, hopefully they will get an opportunity as well. Yeah, it's, it's a shame that the NFL is kind of moving away from special teams being special. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that Turpin last year, you know, he got the chance. And I don't know if you saw the Cowboys game against the Jaguars, he played a lot of wide receiver and wasn't yeah. returning kicks. Yeah. So he got through that front door through uh, special, special teams. teams. Yeah, He got onto that roster and was able to build a relationship with Mike McCarthy and all, all of the Cowboys. And now he's getting a shot as a wide receiver, which last year he didn't have that shot with that. So right. he became an all pro returner. So them taking away the NFL, taking away the special teams, just it, it hurts guys yeah. because, because you got guys like Tez that are playing special teams in the USFL and they're right. excelling with it. And you're taking away that part where they can really stand out and get through that front door and be able to have their uh, role develop over time. So, well, you know, it's, it's funny about special teams. And again, we talk about Brandon Aubrey. I call that one. I, I do yeah. get some credit you for that. Did, I, you did, you did. I think you the did. inside scoop is I'm hearing a buzz. He's going to win that job in Dallas. And it looks like that's his job. So, yeah. you know, that's fantastic to see. And then, um, 
to your point with Mitch um, long snapping out there for Denver, he's the only long snapper on the, on the roster. I know he won the job late last year, but I mean, he's the guy. So there's a Mauler starting and in the NFL right there. Yeah. It, I remember when his first game was a Monday night football game, I believe it was against Seattle. Um, and he snapped the ball and he made the tackle on the first play. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, man, look at this guy. Like this kid really took advantage of, you know, just being in the rock locker room. Right. And he stood out in the first play. And, you know, they calling out his names on Monday Night Football. Yeah. Mitch, Mitch Fabroni. And it's just it's just awesome to see. And I just hope more guys get that opportunity. Yeah. One of Coach Hall's guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Coach Hall. Special teams expert over there. We're special. Hey, and yeah. you know something? You, you hit on something, too, in the last show. I really didn't piggyback off of, but you made a great point. Yep. How many times this past season, offensively, did we start drives at midfield or in plus territory because yep. of the special teams and the job that, you know, Coach Hull and all of his guys do there? I mean, it's, it you know, three phases of the game, complimentary football. And that's a big piece of it. And Mollers were special last year. Hope we're this, that special in 2024. The special teams were coached so well that the yep. play with Josh Simmons, where he was out of bounds and he picked up the ball so they can get yep. the ball at, right before the halftime. Um, that's next level coaching. That's coaching that's those, right there. Yeah, because there are other opportunities. I remember a little bit other opportunities with other teams, and the player just wanted to get the ball and go, you know, show his his speed. But Simmons was like, hey, this is the best part for, for our team. Yep. And even though he probably had all the confidence in the world to take it to the house, he did that game, right, against right. the Stars? Yep. He, he was like, hey, this is the best for the team, and that's next level coaching. Like when you can prepare those little details, those little things – I, Belichick, I know we talked about Belichick before, right. show, but like that is next level coaching. And Coach Hole has done that I, last year with the uh, the fake field goal. I don't know yep. if you remember the fake field goal with Malcolm yep, Howard absolutely. catching it. You had, a, you had a DN linebacker catching the ball. Right. Like uh, that's execution. He told me on the show that it wasn't, it was prettier in practice than it was in the, in the game, but <laughs> it's still execution. Like to have your kicker and punter be able to pu pull that off under the pressure, and then Simmons, it, it's just great coaching. Right. It, just, it really is. No question. This week, we will start releasing the USFL 50, the top 50 players, kind of like what the NFL does in the NFL Network in the offseason. Um, we had 23 ballots, I believe. Uh, we have the list. We're not going to release it here. We're just going to preview the Maulers. Did you get my ballot? I did get your ballot. Your ballot's there. Your okay. ballot's counted. Your ballot... Uh, your ballot is counted. I don't know if you want to t tell you. I'm not going to say my ballot yet. I'll save. Maybe I'll save it for another show. Okay. All right. My, my, my top ten might shock some people, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that you got my ballot and it was yeah. weighted correctly. Your yours. Um, I can't forget. I I could not forget that one. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 you you had a couple guys that uh, stood out for me, but uh, Maulers. There's a lot of locks. I think Gilbert. Tez have to be locks yeah. in the top 50. Um, the way I kind of went about it with my vote was guys that would be able to start in all eight teams. Would they be able to start in all eight teams? And that's, that's what started um, my ballot. Yep. I, uh, I, I definitely think Foster is one of them that has to be on there. Yep. Okay. Yes, agreed. Uh, Henny and Simmons, I think, have to be on there. Yes and yes. And then the D tackles have to be on there. I think Troy should get some consideration. I really do. I don't know if he's a lock, but I think Troy should get some consideration. Did you mention Trey Tarpley? Trey Tarpley should be a lock. Uh, with his defense, honestly, when I was counting the ballots on the USFL 50, like it wouldn't shock me for any of the 11 starters to be named on the list. It might be your uh, your flavor, whatever your flavor yeah. of defense is. Yeah. Um, at the 11 starters really could have been considered at least. But yep. I had a bunch. I had a bunch of our defensive guys you on did. there. I think uh, I'll go ahead and let the count of the bag. Troy was on my list. Yep. And then there's one other Mauler great that was on my list and actually ranked very, very high on the list. Chris Blewett. Yep. A shout out to Chris, your number yep. one fan here in central Pennsylvania. Uh, we love you. Elder Pitt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 
Boogie, was he on your list? Or you don't have to say it. Bo- yeah, Boogie was top 20 for me. Um, Boogie. Boogie, Gilbert, Foster, and Tez were all top 20 for me. Yep, Boogie was top 20 for me. Olive right behind him in the top 20. Josh was there. Ruben was top 15, 16. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Tez was the highest that I had. He was yeah. all right. I'll let the cat out of the bag. Tez was second. I had he he was he was number two. All right. And um, I had Chris Blewett in the top ten. That's all I'll say. All right. I had Tez at two, and I had Gilbert at four. So I had two of the top four. Um, I love a lockdown corner, so that will always get uh, preference over me. Yep. Uh, led the league in interceptions, and I I think last year I took a lot of heat. Because I did not have Channing Stribling in my top twenty-five, and he led the league in interceptions, yeah. because he gave up a ton of yards. Like, yeah. yeah, you can have interceptions. Gilbert didn't give up a lot of the yards. Nope, that, nope. that's the difference. And um, last year, quarterback play was not the same level as this year. This that's year, he, everyone complained about Troy not being explosive enough. And if you really think about it, he never turned over the ball. Like that's he took right. care of the ball and they moved the yeah. ball, and he did his job. Last Absolutely. year, last year you had Kyle Slaughter who had more. All USFL had more interceptions than touchdowns. Yeah, Tiamu had more interceptions than touchdowns. Oh. So, like the quarterback play was a lot better this year. So interceptions weren't handed out. So. Yeah, well, that second year you could see a real difference, and even in the quality of play. Again, and this is not the USFL versus XFL show, but I mean, we took a leap the USFL from year one to year two in terms of overall, you know, play. I mean, it was yeah. just a much better product. So I'm curious to see their league when, you know, they move from year one to year two, how much it improves. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, the USFL was good football this year. And by the way, Gilbert was in my top eight. So okay. Mark was right. Mark was way up there, too. I didn't want you to think I'd fallen off the reservation with. Uh, oh, oh, you're fine. You're, okay. you're good. Good. Well, we signed our big free agent offensive line, Austin Myers, uh, newcomer. We did not. The way the league kind of worked it out was that eight guys were signed by the league and they kind of had a draft. We drafted towards the end because of our record. And we got Austin Myers, which if you watch this film, solid. He went to TCU. That's a big program. Uh, They went through a transformation, obviously, at TCU. They became heavy on transfers. He transferred out, was successful at Memphis. Plays all over the offensive line. You've been doing some scouting on him. Go for it. Yeah, no, the, the, you, you nailed it. The playing all over the offensive line is one of the things the NFL scouts like is versatility. And, um, you know, I think you had mentioned it uh, a couple of weeks ago with Traquan looking to play different positions. You know, this is an opportunity for these guys when they can play multiple positions up front to impress the NFL scouts and to take the next step. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, big body, uh, big frame, like 6'5", 300, 305. Uh, to your point, played at TCU, and then his his last year of eligibility went to Memphis. So we're talking about you know good football programs, uh, good level of competition there. Um, above average pass blocker. I've read a couple of uh, um, scouting reports on him. Um, above average average with pass protection, um, which is which is positive. But the thing that really jumped out to me, he started at offensive guard. He started at offensive tackle while at TCU. He's very versatile. I think this is a great pickup for the Maulers. And we talked about it two weeks ago. Giving that offensive line a chance to gel, supplementing the folks on that offensive line now and and, and getting that, you know, you you nailed it perfectly. Our offensive line really didn't, didn't come together until later in the year with the pickups and the acquisitions that we made. They were a much better offensive line at the end of the year than the beginning. Well, if we bring most of those guys back and then you plug in an Austin Myers, a guy who can play multiple positions, intriguing, could be dangerous. I think it's a great pickup for us. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I just love these pictures because you see, like, the 18-year-old there all the yeah. way to the left of the TCU. Yeah. And by the time he gets to Memphis, he's like, all right, I'm, this is business. We're ready to go. <laughs> so I had to put them both up there because I was like, look at them grow up over time. But um, this, you ever this see one like, of my boy Cole McDonald at uh, Hawaii? So they showed him when he came in from California his freshman year, and he's got the short haircut, and he's got the surfer look. And then they show him his last year at Hawaii, and he's got the uh, the uh, dreads and the uh, the blonde hair and the long dreads or whatever. And it's like, there we go. That's transformation on the olive (laughs) right there. So yeah, I I, offensive line don't get a lot of pictures either. Yeah, 
and normally when you do see a picture of them, there's seven guys all around there. So like for to show that I I just wanted to show it. I yeah, I good. appreciated this. Get my hair to do that. <laughs> yeah. But thank you, thank you for another episode of Hammer Time. Um, we'll do it again. Uh, sure. It's it seems like it's going to be busy. I think business is about to pick up with uh, the Maulers. Uh, I got to change up this logo. I got to add your name on there. Hey, one thing I did want to tell you in all seriousness, yeah. I'm thrilled to be co-hosting this show. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. But I do want to thank you. Um, you know, you started this show and you took it, uh, and, and it's really evolved. And I and yeah. I can tell you from watching. Over the course of the year, it made me a smarter fan. I enjoyed the Thank content, you. the interviews. Thank you you've put a lot into this. Thank you. And um, I, I'm really glad you asked me to be part of it, too. And I look forward to contributing. It's going to be a lot of fun. You ready to do an interview? I'm ready to do an interview. All right. All right. Let's I'm, get it. I'm trying to get a few interviews lined up for us. That'll be good. Um, but 5 p.m. dinner with Alex and Webb now on Wednesdays. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll do it again in a week or two. We'll, we'll figure it out. It, it, it we'll do it again in a week or two. We'll figure it out, depending on the new schedule. Yeah, it's, it well, seems it's like we're gonna be. In, yeah, it's, it's picking up. So it might. It, we were originally planning every other week, but the way this news is flowing out, like we got a brand new GM. Yeah, uh, like I, I, I didn't think that was gonna be a, like that would be its own episode. But now Olive is signed, and the guys <laughs> are playing in camp, and we're signing free agents. It's just, it's just nonstop, so we can't really wait two weeks mm -mm. and not. So we don't have a three-hour episode, really. No, yeah, and even like if you look at some guys too. Um, shout out to Frank Genda at Michigan yep. and Breland Speaks. They're yep. two other guys, and I'm glad that they got signed because I think they really deserved it. But I mean, you know, they're two guys up until you know what yesterday for Breland yep. or two yep. days ago. I was surprised that he hadn't got picked up. But you know, you called it. Uh, some of the, see how things shake out in these NFL camps, and it's really going to pick up. So here's the hey. I'm all yours, man. If you want to do one next week, uh, if we have a busy week, we can get together and do this all over again. EJ Perry, I that that was that was a great pickup. I like, I really like that kid. Yeah. Um, he caused some uh, havoc for our defense, so I'm kind of glad he's out of the USFL. Oh, but at oh. the same time, that second half against Michigan, I don't want to even think about it again. But I mean, we looked so good in the first half defensively. I was like, we got these guys. And then EJ yeah. Perry comes out in the second half. It's like he can do nothing wrong. Yeah. Thank God for our red zone offense and Troy Williams and how far that offense evolved in the North Championship game. They yeah. bailed us out. Yeah. But uh, you couldn't find a better football game in any other level than that game. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. The only thing on the broadcast, when they called the innings, and then the league had to change yeah. it. I was like, oh, boy, they're not ready for this yet. But um, whatever they call it, it was, it's a great format. So, yeah, I like it. I think it's a great format, too. It's easy to understand. It's quick. It's it's uh, you know, I think it's fair, too. I think that's the other thing. Yeah. You play 60 minutes of football. You end up in a tie. You don't want some funky, you know, way of deciding it at the end with these, you know, rules that aren't really related to Football, it, it just kind of defeats the purpose of the, you know, you play 60 minutes to end up with some gimmicky thing at the end. I don't think that the USFL's uh, overtime rules are gimmicky at all. You're lining yeah. it up at the at the two, and there you go. Everybody gets equal chances. It's it's weird for those that gamble with the point spreads because mm -hmm. they do really count as two points. Mm -hmm. So that just throws it for a complete loop because I think the Maulers actually covered because they stopped enough times and they went up by four. That's right. And I, it was three and a half. It's just crazy to think like an overtime game like that really decided it's a little different. So, but yeah. And how do we end that game? Olive. Oh, Olive. Olive. Yeah, Olive. So, how good we, did you feel when that, when EJ threw that ball and Olive put that ball up and that oh, thing yeah. went backwards? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You talked about And then he started, Olive. he started waving. He started yeah. waving to the, yeah, bye bye. <laughs> bye. All right, Alex, we'll do it again. Let's do it again. All right. Thanks, Webb. This has been Hammer Time.